Let's yeah. talk about Tesla moving some mountains. So uh, Elon at the shareholder meeting said, or before that, they said 1,500 Teslas serving as robo-taxis before year end. I believe 500 was Austin and 1,000 was Bay Area. Given the geography, I think 1,000 would make more sense in Bay Area. One, do you think they get there? Let's be very short term. And then what's it look like after that? Maybe a month ago, I would have said no, but I think it was just today. If not, it was very recently. They actually went fully public on the RoboTaxi app. Mm -hmm. I was on the, the wait list for RoboTaxi for a long time, but now I, if I'm in Austin, I can actually go and use it. So that's a good sign. But I think ultimately it's going to come down to whether they pull the safety observers out because I, what I don't think is going to happen is I don't think you're going to hire 1500 safety monitors between now and year end and then fire them in February. Do I think they'll pull the safety monitor out by year end? Probably not. Yeah. If I had to just randomly pick a date, that's my P50 of where I think it'd be, I'd say January 31st, they finally pull the monitors out. And so maybe we get to 1500 shortly after that. What is your mind saying on the short term? Is that a realistic goal or not? It sounds about right. I'm optimistic with 14.2 that they'll get to a place where it's very comfortable. We already know it's really safe. Probably the biggest risk with version 14 of Tesla self-driving is leaves go across the road in front of the car, oh gosh, and the car so panics bad. with the leaves and slows down too much and you get rear-ended. That's probably the biggest risk. So it's very safe. It's very circumspect around crosswalks and pedestrians. It's overly frustratingly circumspect around stop signs. I think they'll fix that for 14.2. I'm optimistic. So I think once they do that and it's comfortable, then Tesla could really unleash the robo taxi in Texas, probably Florida. I'm not sure what the limits are in California, but there'd be other states beyond just Texas and Florida who are, both states are very permissive when it comes to autonomous driving. Yeah. So you and I were working up some numbers around how big RoboTaxi could get in the US. So just to match the fleet that is delivering all the miles for Uber, I believe is taking Uber over a million drivers. So we calculated that it was 400,000 robo taxis that would be needed to be running full out 300 miles a day to replace Uber. And that would be like a pretty extreme thing to happen. That would get a lot of attention. How soon do you think it's possible Tesla could get to that place? And is it regulations and cities that get in the way? I don't think regulations are going to be the limiting factor. I think if the question is how soon could it happen, I'd say 2027, they could get to that type of scale. And even if presumably there will be pockets where they're not allowed to operate, to me, it, just, it seems like the FSD is going to be there with the level of connection and everything like that. I think in 2027, they could get there technologically. I think FSD is going to be fully capable of kind of handling that. But the question in my mind isn't necessarily the regulations, because I think even if you get it in a few key cities, I think you can undercut Uber on price so that the overall TAM expands and you could get to that type of level in 2027. I, I think the real question in my mind is just going to be user adoption. So I think users are going to have a better product. They're going to say, okay, this is a great way to travel. And I love that it's really a clear or a really amazing user experience. You can ride net, watch Netflix prices cheaper than an Uber and you've got the privacy, all the benefits that we truly believe in, but still like human beings are irrational. And I've been shocked at how slow the adoption to EVs in general has been. So it could just be the case that the user adoption is slower than we think. And that might be the limiting factor. That's what I'd be a bit concerned about. Yeah, I agree with that. So I, I think Tesla could deliver some meaningful savings for people riding RoboTaxi without like just giving away almost for free like they are now. I think adoption could struggle, but people could get meaningful savings. And there are many people using Uber and Lyft for their daily commute, which sounds crazy. Like I, I use Uber and Lyft when I'm on vacation, 
when something's going on with my car or maybe I want to go out to eat and not worry about getting pulled over on the way home or whatever. It's not like that's a normal thing for me. <laughs> that's how I think of Uber and Lyft, but most people use it for their commute. They can't afford more cars. So I think what Tesla can do is when you're not paying for a driver, you're not paying for their time and energy, you're not paying to insure against their, their lack of maybe they don't behave properly in the car or whatever. You don't even have to insure against that because there's no driver that whose behavior you need to insure against. Once you do all that, you can drop the cost. And I estimate that someone who's in that situation could save $5, easily $5 a day. And if you're working 25 days a month, that could be $125 a month. Yeah. Uh, I think that'll help adoption for people who like do the math and figure it out. And mm -hmm. you know, maybe someone they know tries it out. So they're not the first pro person to try out the Tesla robo taxi in, in their circle. So they don't have to worry about that. Yeah, I think that's one of the misconceptions that a lot of people still have about this rideshare space is that it's like a, a treat for the upper middle class people when, you know, they're traveling or having a special event or something like that. I was talking to a client who does a lot of Uber rides this week, and he was like super bullish on RoboTaxi, essentially because of this very thing. He's They're going to be able to undercut on price. And if you're basically taking two hours worth of somebody's work for an Uber ride on a mm -hmm. daily commute. Like that's horrible economics for them. And yeah. even if they're like very clearly not a tech adopter or like a tech enthusiast, they'll do it just because they'll be able to save maybe 20% of their daily salary just because yeah. how expensive the commuting cost is. Yeah. I think it's, I, I'm optimistic about that. And I think people who actually drive for Uber seem to be in my experience, a little bit more bullish on RoboTaxi for that very reason. But I'm still a little circumspect, I think, just because the human element is very hard to predict of how are they going to adopt to this new technology, this brand new market that's essentially being created out of thin air. I just, we don't really have a whole lot of precedent for what that's going to look like. Yeah. I worry that some cities will look to oppose Teslas, but with the taxi market, with the rideshare market, cities have taxes that they charge. They have, there's trip fees, there might be per mile fees. RoboTaxi should be very profitable for many cities. And if you're worried about, <coughs> excuse me, if you're worried about traffic, you maybe Tesla ro rolls out the Robovan. Yeah. So that when you, when you have people riding a common route, they can hook into the Robovan, they ride the Robovan to another hub, and then they hop back into a RoboTaxi to continue their trip. Yeah, yeah it's that whole hub and spoke highways. model. Hub and spoke, yep. Just like the airlines do. So I think there's some ways around some of the resistance that could occur. So five years from now, you think that Tesla could potentially get to 400,000 a couple of years from now, it's pretty aggressive. They'll have the supply to be able to do that, right? So mm -hmm. the question then purely comes down to demand. And we, we've done a huge amount of kind of thinking through this, both bottom up, like what's Tesla's supply? When can they actually meet that? As well as top down. Okay, w one of the things that we've got in our model is, all right, what price are we assuming for FSD, for RoboTaxi miles? And then we're assuming that comes down over time. Right. Because like it's it, what the key metric that we have in there is like the cumulative fleet build miles. What is that number as a percentage of Robotex of uh, Uber's overall miles driven? So as you get close to 100% of Uber's miles, you have to be meaningfully undercutting on price. So that's how I'm trying to keep myself honest with the assumptions is, all right, when you get to hundreds of thousands of vehicles, in order to expand that TAM close to 100% of Uber's TAM, and then eventually beyond that, you have to assume that price is low enough to generate some elasticity in that demand. But this is something where Arc's done a huge amount of work where they, I forget the exact numbers, but they found some like, massive elasticity in RoboTaxi pricing and how that translates to the overall TAM. And that's something that you actually highlighted also from Uber's tests historically. Yeah, what they found was versus current pricing, if you drop all the way to a dollar a mile, the demand grows by 20 Fold 20 times 
that was a test they did back in like 2021, something like that, where they offered that. I think you, I think potentially like Tesla could get people hooked with low fares, but then increase the fares as people find that it's much nicer to be in a car by yourself. You can talk with your relative as loud as you want. You can argue with them. You can play music on, on your own playlist in the back of the Tesla, watch your own Netflix movies. Yeah. Maybe you also do that on your phone, but it could be hooked into the car speakers. Like it should be a much better experience than, mm-hmm. than having the Uber driver or the Lyft driver. But I think initially you're right. People won't get it and they'll need to experience it to understand. Yeah. Yeah. So, it will in- so we're talking about over 400,000 robo taxis potentially that the supply will be there. The technology will be there in two years. And then looking out five years, <laughs> very easily could be over 2 million in the U S that sounds like a really big number to me. (laughs) Farzad probably thinks we're too low there, but you could easily go over 2 million, probably over 10 million in the U S Tesla wouldn't have a reason to increase production in the U S 